Okay, in this uh, video, I wanted to build a uh, timer thing so I could show a lapse time of a user in a game at different points. And I wanted to uh, encapsulate that into something. So um, this is going to show three ways of doing that using a class, a generator, or a function. Uh, we want the use to be real simple. We want to create a thing that sets the timer to zero and then using that thing with a method call or something we want to query the elapsed time at any point in our code later. So let's look at the class version and this is in Python 3 um, so we're going to use the time uh, module from Python we created a class called elapsed time when you create the uh, object it's going to st store the current time and a start time and when you call the object, so this is a little trick, you can actually call on the uh, name of the object. It's going to take the current time and subtract the start and return that. So it'll give you the elapsed time. So it's very simple. I have a little test here. Um, so in, uh, it's going to set an object E1 and an object E2 later. Those will be set and measure the time since the creation of those objects. And then just four, uh, five times, we're going to print E1 and we're going to look up uh, we're going to call E1, so there's the call, and I'm converting it to microseconds um, because the uh, timer time returns a float, which is the number of seconds as a floating point. So I multiply it by a million and add the, the preface microseconds. Notice in Python 3, I can directly put a Unicode character in my code here, the mu symbol. And so that runs five times, and then I create another object. And I run that five times, and I and I'm and I print the uh, lapse time since I started E1 and E2. So let's go ahead and run it here in a shell. And you can see where it works. So I get the elapsed time for five times, and then it keeps reporting on E1. But now I've created E2, so it's also giving the elapsed time for that. Um, so very simple. So now let's look at how we can use a generator in Python. This may be the most uh, Pythonic way of doing it, but that's a good question. So here we have uh, a definition of a function called elapsed time. I have a start again to get the start time. And while one, I could say while true, but I, I did it this way, I yield. So that's going to create a generator function and uh, I yield the time, current time, minus start time. So to use this, I ha you use the next operator or standard method and give it the, the iterator, which is the generator, and it's going to end up doing the yield to get the current time. So I have the same basic print, the only difference is uh, how I look up the time. So let's run this. And that's called generator. And you can see it works fine. Okay. Now the last one is using functional programming. So here uh, we're just introducing a, a lambda. So we're returning a function here. So the way it works is uh, we create the the elapsed time function. Uh, we store the start time in a local variable to elapsed time, and this local variable will be part of the context of the function we're defining here. So when we come back and use this function, it can refer to this uh, local context. And uh, so it's going to return a, a function here that just uh, uh, has no parameters. It's a lambda unnamed uh, um, function that takes the current time minus the start time. So we use it uh, actually the same way when we're calling the object. We, this time we return the function and store that here. And so we call that function with no parameters, it's going to invoke the lambda function that was created. And so we have E1 and E2, and we'll go ahead and run that. And you can see it works. Uh, so now I'll leave, leave it to you if you want to go on time, which is better. And certainly there could be a discussion as which of these three choices you would choose or something else. Thank you.